Hey, what's going on everyone? Monado Max here. And today we're gonna to be talking about something that I didn't think was possible. And that is another bad Nintendo Switch game. And the reason why I say it's not possible is I didn't think it was possible to make a worse Nintendo Switch game out there compared to some of the really bad Switch games that we've played out there because, well, there's a lot of shovelware onto the console. And, well, today I have something that is quite literally the worst Nintendo Switch game of all time. And that game is none other than Skull Island Rise of Kong. And wow, this game literally came out of nowhere. Uh, obviously, King Kong is a big property. Everyone's excited for King Kong. Anytime there's a Skull Island movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, it's a very big IP. A lot of people really like the movies. And it's especially something that doesn't really get much video game formats of. Uh, I think the last time we got a video game of King Kong was back in 2005. So I think there's definitely an interest for that. Especially considering how popular this game has been talked about recently. Now, it could be due to how bad the game is. However, I think it's a combination of how bad the game is and how bad people actually want a King Kong game. Today, we're going to be going over a lot of things regarding this game. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Well, there's really nothing good about it, but we have a lot to talk about when it comes to this game. I think something that's very interesting about this game already, when you get the physical copy of this game, when you open it up, there's already a customer service right there for you guys to email. And uh, it's literally saying, don't ask for tips, tricks, anything about that when it comes to this game. Just email us, us about the problems of the game. So. Game Mill Entertainment definitely knew what was coming out and knew what the reaction was going to be with this game. Which, speaking of Game Mill Entertainment, Game Mill Entertainment does a lot of games uh, in terms of uh, properties out there. You know, they did the Nickelodeon games recently, they did Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. That was actually a pretty good game for what it was, as long as we don't compare it to Smash Bros. It was a pretty good game, all things considering. Uh, they've done Cobra Kai, they've done the new uh, Avatar Last Airbender game. They've come out with a combination of good games and bad games. As, but it's very clear that the company just does stuff that's uh, properties, you know. Uh, Nickelodeon specifically is a lot of stuff that they are used to making. Apparently, this game, when they got the rights to make a King Kong game, they only had one year to make a game. They were forced to only have one year. That was the time given. If they couldn't do it, no point in making the game. I don't know why they still decided to make this game, all things considering, because the developers themselves knew this was going to be really bad. I guess it's truly just a cash grab, uh, which a lot of this stuff typically is when it comes to when they're using other people's properties. Typically cash grabs, especially movie properties, making into video games. This is kind of like a, con a common thing back in the old days of making video games. Except, I don't really think the games were this bad. Like, really, really bad. But let's go ahead and start talking about the game itself. Immediately, right when I opened up the game, it had just this random cutscene that really just was just completely random. It was just talking, and then boom, out of nowhere, you're starting the game. There was no build-up or anything. You just end up in this world of King Kong. It, it is super weird how it started off. But immediately, as the game starts, you can already see that the game looks absolutely horrible. It looks soulless. The world looks soulless. I mean, even the animations look poor. The fighting looks poor. I mean, King Kong himself, man, the guy looks rough. I mean, this game, listen, I'm a Switch player, so it's hard for me to uh, talk about graphics, I feel like, because, you know, the Switch games, there, there's some bad Switch games out there. And there's times that I'm like, you know what, this really isn't as bad as people make it out to be when it comes to the graphics. But as a Switch player, this game right here looks ab absolutely disgusting. It looks horrible. And I feel like that says a lot for me to tell you that a game looks really, really bad, all things considering. I mean, I have reviewed over 60 third-party games on the Nintendo Switch. I've made top 10 videos talking about which is the good third-party games you should buy and which are the ones you shouldn't buy, all that type of stuff. And I've pointed out graphics, frame rate, all of that. This has to be the worst one that I have seen. And there's some bad Switch games out there, guys. And for me to make that complaint says a lot. The animations look like it's something from a 2000s game 
while the graphics looks like it's from something, it, it looks like a mobile game from the 2010s. And all honesty, when they just started making mobile games for uh, iOS, Android, all that type of stuff. And like the animations, man, like it, it is soulless. It, it is so soulless. That That is the word that I can only use for this. For whatever reason, this game decided to have a skill tree in this game where you could unlock moves. There's like a whole, they call it, I think, a Kong points where you use it to unlock more moves, that type of stuff. I don't really know why they spent the time to develop all of that because if you look, they show off the moves that you're learning, like what's going to happen when you unlock this upgrade, that type of stuff. But the footage that I'm showing you right now, the clips are all the exact same clips. I've never seen something like that, and it sounds like they really should have put the development towards the world, graphics, cutscenes, all that type of stuff, animations, rather than this skill tree system because it's horrible. The cutscene themselves that they're showing for the skill tree set that they have looks absolutely horrible. Like the game, you could tell it's not the Switch version because it actually looks a little bit better, but it's also. It runs so weird the cutscenes that they have I, I don't know how to describe it other than saying very weird and has me questioning a lot of things I want to talk about the cutscenes again because my entire time of playing this game the cutscenes when I say they literally happen out of nowhere they quite literally happen out of nowhere and you're you'll be going through like five sets of cutscenes all at once different areas and it all is poorly placed and the times that you're playing the game, you're not expecting to play it because how the cutscenes are. You'll be in the middle of somewhere in some area, and then you'll jump to this next area in a cutscene, and then end up in another area. You'll be in five different areas in the span of like three minutes in a cutscene. It is absolutely wild. One thing that I thought was hilarious is when I'm in boss fights, sometimes there'll be points where lightning comes out of nowhere. And you'll be seeing lightning, the lightning JPEG show up on the game and it looks so bad. And when it lands in the game, the game is dropping frames like crazy. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. It was absolutely wild. That is all I could say. Like the game went from like, I want to say it was like two frames per second. Like I, I joke about that a lot, but it genuinely feel like I was playing a two frames per second game in the middle of a boss fight when that lightning just landed and the lightning just looks so bad. It's just, it's just the JPEG. It is so bad. Exploring this world, it feels so empty too, because I feel like anytime I'm in a place, all I'm seeing is the exact same thing over and over and over like i don't know it, it feels like one of those games that you would see on the eShop where they just buy the models like an asset flip basically they buy the assets just to flip them to make a cheap game this feels like what this game was because the amount of things that i'm seeing in this game it's all the same thing and the poppin don't even get me started on the poppin dude listen poppin is a very big thing for me i hate seeing uh, games with pop in. Uh, I, I anytime I see a Switch game and then I see that having that problem, I always bring it up in my reviews. I think that might be a very minimal thing for most people, but um, for me, it's something that's very noticeable to me. In the same way that you know, lip syncing, I, I can very notice like it's like the number one thing that I notice right away that nobody really pays attention to, and then when I point it out that the syncing does not match with what's going on with their, their lips. Everyone gets mad at me because like, oh man, I, I don't even notice that. Why did you point that out to me? Now I'm never gonna forget seeing this. It, it's something that I notice with games and it annoys me so much. And this game is no better. I mean, this is probably one of the worst pop-in games of all time. I, I thought Sonic Frontier's Switch version was really bad with the pop-in. Well, <laughs> this has got a contender right here because this game has got to be the worst with that. So bad. And like when I'm landing on the grass, the grass just disappears so badly. Like, I, it's so bad, it's so bad. I can't believe I bought this. One thing that I experienced a lot playing this game is audio issues. It seems like this audio issue would happen when I die in the game. And you know what, uh, I'm just gonna show you guys the clip. Now warning, headphone users, this is going to be kind of not loud well it's gonna be loud it's gonna hurt so if you're watching this video at a high volume i would turn it down right now uh because i'm about to show you 
what happens. I'm not gonna go into detail or anything. I'm just going to demonstrate what exactly happened with the audio because I had this happen a lot while playing this game. Yeah, I, I can't believe what I saw, uh, or I guess saw, I guess the better word to be what I heard, because that was horrible. Uh, the game, man, so many problems. And then another problem that I ran into, which was really, really bad, anytime that I die in the game, I can't move in like the next playthrough of the game until somebody hits me. So there'll be like a boss fight and they hit me with their strongest move and I've already lost so much health just to get out to walk around and fight. It was so annoying. I think I want to end this video out on a good note regarding this game right here. I think this game, if they would have been given a fair amount of development time, a few years, I think this game honestly had potential to be something great. Because the concept of this game, from what I played, sounded fun. The concept was very fun, is what I'll say about it. It just was projected very poorly, they weren't given enough time, and I think something like this has potential down the road if somebody wants to make a game like this. It's just gonna take a few years of development time. People can't try to flip on this. I, I don't know what the plan was with this, why they were only given one year, but I think people genuinely would like to play a game like this if it was given the right amount of game development time like any other game should be given, and uh, the right budget. Because I could see with what their concept was, if I think this could have been a good game, could have been a good game, it's just they weren't given enough money and they were not given enough time, they were given a questionable amount of time, I just... Yeah, it stinks. I really think this could have been very special. And it also has me concerned uh, because Game Mill Entertainment has another game coming out. Well, actually, they got two games that I'm pretty excited for. One that I'm really, really excited for. They got Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. I'm not really worried about that. I think Game Mill Entertainment realizes what they have and the amount of interest that's there, that they're going to give that the right amount of time, that they're not going to you know, force something to come out that doesn't need to come out yet. The thing that I'm really worried about, a game that I'm really excited for because how much I love the show, The Walking Dead Destinies is developed by them. And the game already kind of looks rough, but the concept of that game looks so cool. I hope that the, it's not as bad as what the trailers make it look to be. I hope that it's really good. I hope Game Mill Entertainment was given more time than a year to develop that. I mean, AMC is pretty good about that stuff, so. I hope that that's the case. But I want to know what you guys are thinking because I just scratched the surface of this game. Because what I was talking about, I had to give up on this game because I, after playing it, it was just hurting my head. Seeing these visuals, I, I couldn't continue anymore. It, I had to give up. I had to close out of the game. And yeah, this this will never be played again because it was. I'm like I'm not even joking. It was hurting my head playing this game because. Ugh. The world was disgusting, the, the visuals was disgusting, but I do want to know what you guys are thinking because there's so much bad that we didn't even get into in this game because I haven't even reached that part of the game. If you look on Twitter, you will see far more memes regarding this game than what we talked about in this video today. So let me know what you guys are thinking if you played the game, what you think of it. Do you think it had potential to be something good if they had enough time, like three years of development time? Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Make sure to backslash that subscribe button, like the video, check out the Twitter, check out the Discord server, check out our YouTube streams. We've been streaming every Sunday night around 9 p.m. EST. So uh, be cool to see you guys there. Uh, we do all sorts of things on the streams. It's craziness will happen on the streams. Love to see you guys there. We've got a podcast. We're actually about to start doing that live pretty soon. Uh, probably next week we'll have a live podcast episode. So that will be pretty cool. 
And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. And uh, yeah, don't don't buy this game. This is the worst Nintendo Switch game of all time, literally. Uh, this is worse than Martian Panic. I think I would prefer to play Martian Panic than whatever this was. Which stinks because this has, look at this cover, man. This cover looks so cool. Like this, this looks like a triple A game right here with this cover. And then you look at the back and then you're like, oh yeah, no, not a triple A game. See you guys in the next video.